Good morning, grade 12 students. So, welcome to Understanding Culture, Society, and Politics. We are in quarter 2, module 4, and the lesson 1 is about under addressing the social inequalities. The most essential learning competency is to explain government programs and initiatives in addressing so social inequalities and suggest ways to address social inequalities. Objectives is to analyze the different forms of social inequality, explain the theories on global stratification, suggest ways to address social inequalities, appreciate tolerance and respect for individual differences based on gender and ethnicity, and lastly to compose a journal entry sharing your own re realizations and views on the lesson. The previous module focused on social stratification and mobility. People are classified based on their wealth, power, and prestige. It also depends on the stratification system on how people move on the social strata. Let us refresh our knowledge and apply what we have learned from the previous discussion by unscrambling the words and give the meaning. So number one, okay, correct, social mobility. Next, case system. And the last word is stratification. So as a review, um, social mobility is a process by which individuals or groups move from one status to another or from one class to another. So um, people who belong to the lower class, maybe in the middle class or upper, upper class, depend, depending on how he worked for it. And Social stratification, it is a systematic categorization of individuals and institutions according to their roles and status in the society. So, so the people are grouped according to age and different aspects. There are also social desirables such as wealth, power, and prestige in the social stratification. So moving on with the lesson one about social inequality. Social stratification is directly related to the issue of social inequality. When we say so social inequality, it refers to the unequal access to social, political, and symbolic capital of individuals in the society. It was discussed in the previous module that social stratification is a way of classifying people into different categories depending on some so social factors. The most prominent of the social factors that affect stratification is wealth. Once there is an unequal access to wealth and resources, there is social inequality and equal chances of living standards. So we can see in the picture the picture of the squatters area and the wealth the symbol or the gold the symbol of rich people the rich gets more while the poor gets less the rich become richer and the poor become poorer this is the end scenario that our society is facing today. Those in the upper class will always enjoy the privileges and opportunities that life offers, while those in the lower class need to be contented with what they have. This heartbreaking scenario has always been the plight of the poor and the marginalized. Inequality exists in the society. This lesson will provide a deeper understanding of the impact of social stratification on social inequality. It will uncover the relationship of social stratification to existing social inequality. It will analyze such concepts like stereotypes, patriarchy, racism, prejudice, and inclusivity among others. It will also explain why there are rich countries and poor ones. It is hoped that after this lesson, you would have a clear understanding of the above mentioned concepts and become sensitive and active in addressing the issues of inequalities. When we say 
social inequality. This is based on the different standards of life. For example, there is a social capital, symbolic capital, and political capital. Social capital refers to the characteristics of social organization, which includes networks, norms, and trust that enable coordination and cooperation for the common benefit. Social capital embodied in norms and networks of civic engagement seems to be a requirement for economic development and effective governance. However, some studies reveal that social capital may result in social exclusion as non-members of the organization or networks may not have access to the resources otherwise available to the members. The exclusivity brought about by social stratification, particularly those in the upper class, makes it difficult for those in the lowest class to access and utilize the benefits and connections that the upper class enjoy. Next, symbolic capital. This refers to the resources available to an individual on the basis of honor, prestige, or merit. Graduating from a prestigious university, say for example, the University of the Philippines may have symbolic capital in the context of looking a job. Symbolic capital may come from the possession of objects with a perceived or concrete sense of value. The use of the latest iPhone model holds the symbolic capital because of wealth and prestige, which in turn distinguishes the person using it so in symbolic capital it is like when you're applying a job and when you're uh, when your applicant when your co-applicant is from the University of the Philippines or the University of Santo Tomas they will be given a priority because they are uh, they studied in a first class school so they are priority in hiring a job compared to you that you only studied in the state university next political capital refers to the benevolence or goodwill of a politician or political policy which can build up with the, with the public through the implementation of popular policies this goodwill can then be mobilized to achieve other objectives such as the passing of unpopular policies. This means that politicians may use their power to help their constituents through favorable policies and at the same time implement policies that will protect their self-interest. For example, a local government unit approved the mining project in their area in the hope of providing jobs to their people. However, this policy may also pose significant risk to the environment and to the lives of the miners and to the nearby community where the mining activity takes place. In the end, it is only the politician who will benefit the most in the industry. Next, gender equality. Society creates and enforces expectations on how men and women should behave, which leads to stereotyping and gender stratification. Gender stratification is the unequal distribution of wealth, power, authority, and privilege between men and women. On the other hand, stereotypes are strong preconceived idea or attitude in the minds of the people about something. Stereotypes can be based on race, ethnicity, age, gender, sexual orientation, when there is an equal opportunity between men and women, there is gender inequality. So, we are being stereotyped. Stereotype which means that the use of color-coded gender labels such as blue for boys and pink for girls 
or jobs suited for a specific gender only reflect gender stereotyping. So, yun yung example ng stereotyping. Next, gender role is the society's concept on how men and women are expected to behave. These roles are based on norms or standards or behavior created by the society. For example, a woman is expected to be weak and dependent and do chores intended for a woman, like to take care of the home, to take care of the husband and children. However, this idea is now challenged by feminist groups who calls for women empowerment at home and in the workplace. Gender role. So most of uh, the women today are working. Unlike before, na they just stay at home and uh, wait for the salary of their husband. And they will just clean the house, do household chores, and take care of the children. But more there is but now there is uh, more equality between men and women because they are given a chance to work next sexism sexism is a system belief noted in the assertion that men and women are naturally different it promotes the perceived superiority of one sex and tolerates gender discrimination Sexist ideas construct the image of a male as a man having an affair with other women as a reflection of masculinity. However, when a woman is unfaithful, she is subject, subjected to humiliation for such action and is considered as a disgrace to her family and society. Sexism promotes a macho culture that advocates male domination. So, makikita natin yan dito sa Philippines na, yun nga, kapag ang uh, lalaki ay unfaithful, masculine siya. Pero pagka babae, ang gumawa, that is a disgrace to the family. ba? So, next, gender inequality occurs mostly in patriarchy or in a male-dominated society. Patriarchy refers to the institutionalized systems of male dominance in a given society whereby the, me the male, the father figures, are entitled to privileged positions, powers, and status in the society. This happens when males assume more power than women. Male dominance or subjugate women as their subjects. Double standards prevail over monogamous relationships, stereotypes of women as mere subjects, properties, and sex objects are some manifestations of patriarchy in society. So, patriarchy, uh, male is dominant compared to women. Some members of lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender or LGBTQ plus communities also experience discrimination. Homophobia is an extreme and irrational hatred toward homosexuality. Employment chances are slim, especially for irrational hatred toward homosexuality. Employment chances are slim, especially for jobs attributed as a traditional male or female domain. Some members of the LGBT also experience harassment and worse become victims of hate crimes. An example of this is the death of the Filipino trans woman Jennifer Laude in the hands of the U.S. private first class Joseph Scott Pemberton in 2014. Her brutal death they ignited the, the call to protect and observe the rights of LGBT community. The LGBT community should be treated equally as they also have significant contributions to the society. It is important to understand that the gender should not be a barrier to social mobility. What man can perform, 
agreement can also perform. Gender shift among job preferences is also observable in recent years with more males venturing in the restaurant and food industry and women taking on jobs once dominated by men, such as in the field of engineering, aeronautics, and the like. There are even some women who are uncas and grab drivers, and not to mention female presidents and heads of corporate businesses. Racial and ethnic inequality. Race and ethnicity, just like gender, can also be a basis for social stratification. Race refers to the physical differences between people brought about by biological characteristics of genetic origin. The commonness of genetic heritage is maybe manifested in the skin color, physique, facial features, hair, and other physical characteristics. Meanwhile, ethnicity refers to the grouping of people based on common identity according to their language, culture, and history. Ethnicity pertains to a shared cultural tradition of people, therefore a race pertains to one's biological characteristic while ethnicity refers to one's cultural heritage. Race and ethnicity influence social stratification. The distinct physical characteristic of an individual can be a source of both prejudice and discrimination. Discrimination is defined as an unequal treatment for the various types of people according to the race and ethnicity. Next, prejudice. Prejudice is defined as a rigid and an unfair generalization about an entire category of the people. It also refers to the beliefs, thoughts, the feelings, and attitudes that someone holds about a group. An example of prejudice is the distinctive smell often associated with the Arabs and Indians which reflects bias, thinking, and prejudgment of another race. The history of our country shows that the early Filipinos experienced both discrimination and prejudice during the Spanish period. Filipinos were judged not by merit, but by their race and ethical affiliations. Spaniards saw the Filipinos as an inferior race compared to them. Many abuses stem out from this kind of discrimination and prejudice such as forced labor, unfair tax collection, and selective education for the Indios or native Filipinos among others. Discrimination and prejudice can also be seen in the treatment of those with different ethnicity. For example, the Aitas of Pampanga, who are easily recognizable for their physical attributes such as their dark skin and curly hair, experience unequal, unequal opportunities compared to those living in the lowlands. This is also in the case of the Bajau who are forced to leave their seaside communities to look for better opportunities in the city. The Lumads are also a subject of discrimination and violence in Mindanao. It is also common to use the word Mangyan when an individual is being compared to an illiterate person, when in fact Mangyan is an ethnic group in the highlands of Mindoro. Education, social and health services and opportunities are far from the reach of these ethnic groups. This shows that ethnicity becomes a field of social inequality when a certain culture considers itself superior than other culture. Access to different opportunities like quality of life, better health care, and educational opportunities vary among the various ethnic groups. People belonging to a dominant group may enjoy the better quality of life, better health care, and better life expectancy, and better educational opportunities. Unfortunately, those who belong to minority ethnic groups may suffer the opposite of what the dominant ethnic groups continue to enjoy. In current world affairs, our world is now facing huge problems of the refugees. When we say refugee, these are the people who are made to leave their original places of residence and countries due to the various reasons, including discrimination. 
An example is the Rabinia Muslim, Rohingya Muslims, an ethnic minority group residing in the borders of Bangladesh and Myanmar. The Rohingya Muslims experience discrimination and inhumane treatment. The plight of the Rohingya caught the attention of the international community, but unfortunately, the miserable condition of the Rohingya continues despite the global attention they have received. Racism is also a type of social inequality. Racism is a belief that humans are categorized into distinct groups in which they can be ranked as superior or inferior. This belief ignores the social behavior and mental and physical capacities of an individual. Racism is an example of a prejudice that is used to justify the belief that one race is somehow superior or inferior to others. Discrimination based on race or ethnicity can take in many forms such as genocide and segregation. What is genocide? Genocide is considered as the most extreme form of ethnic and racial discrimination. Genocide as the deliberate elimination of group of people through mass murder. The most widely recognized case of genocide happened during the World War II when Hitler and his collaborators attempted to exterminate the Jewish people systematically in what was known as the Holocaust. Hitler's hatred of the Jews led him to put up the concentration and extermination camps for the mass execution of 6 million Jews. The Holocaust is considered as one of the darkest times in history. Next, segregation. Segregation refers to the physical separation of the two groups, particularly in residence, workplace, and social functions. An example of segregation in the apartheid movement of South Africa, which existed from 1948 and were forced to 1994. Under apartheid, black South Africans were stripped of their civil rights and were forcibly relocated to areas that segregated them physically from the whites. After decades of degradation, degradation, violent uprisings, and international advocacies, apartheid was finally abolished in 1994. Aside from gender, race, and ethnicity, a person's disability may also be a basis for inequality. The United Nations defined disability as a long-term physical, mental, intellectual, or sensory impairment of a person which, in interaction, with various barriers may hinder his or her full and effective participation in the society as an equal basis with others. The World Health Organization defined disability as an umbrella term covering impairments, activities, limitations, and participation and restrictions. An impairment is a problem in a body function or structure or mental functioning while an activity limitation is the difficulty encountered by an individual in executing a task or action. Lastly, a participation re restriction is a problem experienced by an individual when involved in a life situation. According to World Health Organization, there is a high probability that the persons with disabilities live in poverty. They are likely to be socially excluded or marginalized. They have a low employment participation and low level of education. They are likely to suffer from violence, discrimination, and lack of access to health care. Persons with disabilities do not just suffer inequality because they are handicapped. They further experience inequality because some societies do not provide for their needs. Stereotyping of people with disabilities as useless also limits their opportunities in society. Given the said scenario, it is important to promote inclusivity among persons with disability. 
When given the right opportunity, persons with disabilities can progress on their own despite their physical limitations. One good example is Rosal Ambubuyog, who emerged as the first visually impaired Filipino to graduate summa cum laude from Ateneo de Manila University in 2001. It is therefore important to create an inclusive society where everyone despite gender, disabilities, or race and ethnicity is given equal opportunity to thrive and prosper. Next, global inequality. Global inequality involves the concentration of resources in certain powerful nations, significantly affecting the opportunities of individuals in poorer and less powerful countries. Global stratification, on the other hand, compares the wealth, economic stability, status, and power of countries across the world. Global stratification highlights worldwide patterns of social inequality. To understand global stratification, it is important to look at the three categories of nations based on their degree of wealth, power, and level of industrialization and economic developments. The United Nations and the World Bank have used various classifications system containing three categories. The first typology came into the use after the World War II and classified nations into the following. First world, these were the Western and capitalist democracies of North America, Europe, Australia, and Japan, to name a few. Second world countries, these were the communist countries or the nations belonging to the Soviet Union. And third, third world countries, these were the remaining nations from Central and South America, Africa, and Asia. So we are in the third world countries. The second typology placed nations into developed, developing, and underdeveloped categories. Developed countries, these countries have high economic development with a high level of industrialization, such as Japan, Australia, Norway, Singapore, and UK, to name a few. Developing countries, these are less economically developed countries but are gearing toward industrialization. Most countries in Asia and South America are included in this category. So Philippines is in the developing countries and we can move to the developed countries if we will um, work for it. Next, underdeveloped countries. These are the countries categorized by the United Nations with the lowest socio-economic development. Some countries in Africa, South Asia, and Australia are included in this category. This classification was later criticized. Calling countries developed made them appear to be superior, while calling countries underdeveloped made them to be inferior. The third and revised typology or classification rounds of countries on their level of economic development, namely high-income countries, are those with the highest overall standards of living like the U.S., London, Japan, Canada, Germany, China, etc. Middle-income countries are those with above-average standard of living like Brazil, Russia, India, etc. According to World Health Organization, there is a high probability that the persons with disabilities live in poverty. They are likely to be socially excluded or marginalized. They have a low employment participation and low level of education. They are likely to suffer from violence, discrimination, and lack of access to health care. Persons with disabilities do not just suffer inequality because they are handicapped. They further experience inequality because some societies do not provide for their needs. Stereotyping of people with disabilities as useless also limits their opportunities in society. Given the said scenario, it is important to promote inclusivity among persons with disability. When given the right opportunity, persons with disabilities can progress on their own despite their physical limitations. One good example is Rosal Ambubuyog, who emerged as the first visually impaired Filipino to graduate summa cum laude from Ateneo de Manila University in 2001. It is therefore important 
to create an inclusive society where everyone despite gender, disabilities, or race and ethnicity is given equal opportunity to thrive and prosper. Next, global inequality. Global inequality involves the concentration of resources in certain powerful nations, significantly affecting the opportunities of individuals in poorer and less powerful countries. Global stratification, on the other hand, compares the wealth, economic stability, status, and power of countries across the world. Global stratification highlights worldwide patterns of social inequality. To understand global stratification, it is important to look at the three categories of nations based on their degree of wealth, power, and level of industrialization and economic developments. The United Nations and the World Bank have used various classifications system containing three categories. The first typology came into the use after the World War II and classified nations into the following. First world, these were the Western and capitalist democracies of North America, Europe, Australia, and Japan, to name a few. Second world countries, these were the communist countries or the nations belonging to the Soviet Union. And third, third world countries, these were the remaining nations from Central and South America, Africa, and Asia. So we are in the third world countries. The second typology placed nations into developed, developing, and underdeveloped categories. Developed countries, these countries have high economic development with a high level of industrialization, such as Japan, Australia, Norway, Singapore, and UK, to name a few. Developing countries, these are less economically developed countries but are gearing toward industrialization. Most countries in Asia and South America are included in this category. So Philippines is in the developing countries and we can move to the developed countries if we will um, work for it. Next, underdeveloped countries. These are the countries categorized by the United Nations with the lowest socio-economic development. Some countries in Africa, South Asia, and Australia are included in this category. This classification was later criticized, calling countries developed made them appear to be superior, while calling countries underdeveloped made them to be inferior. The third and revised typology or classification rounds of countries on their level of economic development, namely high-income countries, are those with the highest overall standards of living like the U.S., London, Japan, Canada, Germany, China, etc. Middle-income countries are those with above-average standard of living like Brazil, Russia, India, etc. Low-income countries are those with low standard of living as most people in these countries are poor like most countries in the Africa, South America, and Asia. Theories on global stratification. Number one is modernization theory. The two most widely accepted theories on global stratification are modernization theory and dependency theory. These theories have contrasting ideas why there are countries that are economically developed while others are falling behind. So, number one is modernization theory. According to this theory, rich nations become wealthy because they are able to develop certain values, beliefs, and practices conducive to the acquisition of wealth. These traits include willingness to work hard, to abandon tradition in favor of new ways of thinking and doing things, and to be future-oriented rather than focusing only in the present. Modernization theory views that global stratification results from the failure of poor nations to develop beliefs, values, and practices, practices necessary for industrialization and rapid economic growth. Next, dependency theory. According to dependency theory, the, explo the exploitation committed by the rich nations to poor nations explains why these countries still remain in poverty. Based on this theory, the poor nations never got a chance to pursue economic growth because early 
on, they were colonized by European countries. This truly implies that poor nations remain poor because of the lack of opportunities owing to exploitation by wealthy nations. Dependency theory views global stratification as the result of the colonization and exploitation of the poorest nations by the richest ones. What are the measures or programs to reduce inequality? Number one is to invest in education. Education for the longest time has been proven as a great equalizer. Education is the best security for the future. Number two, intensify the conditional class transfer or the Pantawid Pamilyang Filipino program and to the poor communities at the same time provide them skills training so they will not become dependent on the government. Number three, create more job opportunities. Number four, invest in human capital. It's important to provide trainings that will generate jobs and employment. Number five, show strong political will on the part of the government to implement genuine reforms and programs. The flight to eradicate inequality is a long battle, but we can still win the war against inequality through collaborative efforts between the people and the government. Social stratification is intrinsic in society, but we can still do something to minimize and reduce the impact of inequality between classes. So that's all for today. Thank you very much. I hope you have understand our lesson about social inequality.